what are some of this, the strategies you've implemented in the past to, you know, to rebuild your commercial relationships and attract new sponsors after, after your relocation? Because a, a, as you mentioned earlier, you said it's very different. You, your phone all, all of a sudden stops. People stop calling you. Yeah. So that means that now you have to work harder. Is there anything that you can share with us to, you know, so others can benefit from? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, hopefully this will never happen again because it was unique for all of us. But on that first week of COVID, we, uh, some clubs were not allowed to talk to their partners because there was a whole thing about what we're going to do with these rights, which people have paid a lot of money for. The season looked like it was going to get curtailed, so it was, the season was going to finish, which as much as we were against it as a club, actually it would have kept us up because um, we ended up getting relegated. But we as a club and me personally believed in um, the, the, the sport which needs to go on and, and the fairness of the sport, the spirit of competition needs to go on. I remember that, that first week of COVID well, that we got all of our sponsors onto one call. And if you remember, well, maybe it wasn't for you guys, Zoom and Teams, they're reasonably new there. We, I'd never had a call with 30 people on, on before and for that week. Um, so we got everyone on and I went and I'd rehearsed this big, big monologue of how look, we're asking you to support us. And about two sentences in, our then front of shared sports bet who were some, like, we've been so lucky to work with some great sponsors and they were great people, really great, great people. And the owner, Tim, just sort of cut me off and he said, guys, we're all in this together. We're all in this situation. You don't need to stand there. We're not going to make things hard for you. Um, we're in this together. And I don't believe that one person on the call will make it hard for you. And I know there were people on that call ready to make things hard for me. But after Tim said that, then everyone was like, oh, no, you know what? No, actually, yeah, you're right. We are all in this together. So I think the open and tra the open attitude and being transparent with people, I think... I, I do think absolute plays dividends when when you're backed up against a wall. Um, and it's the same with relegation. We've we've been relegated twice, um, and some of our partners of American Airlines, football manager, Kel May, they've been up with us, they've been down with us twice. And that relationship's really strong. And just one of our partners in the last month, it's not fair to name, name who, have come to us with a problem. And a lot of clubs would have tried to kick him out because of it. But we've worked with him. We've worked on a solution. And um, only about half an hour before his call, I was able to email him to say, look, this is how we're going to support you. So it's, it's a two-way thing. And that's why we call it partnership rather than sponsorship. Because sponsorship sounds a bit crass. It sounds like you sell your rights and you don't really help out. But this is a pure partnership. So I think, I guess, a strategy... And it's, it's not exactly groundbreaking here, but it is to be open, to be honest, and to work with partners. And I've often believed that people buy off people. So you need to be, in, especially when you're selling multi-million pound sponsorship, you need to like the people you're buying off, I, I believe. And in a way, you need to like the people who are buying off you as well, because it makes for a better relationship and having those relationships. And, and going back to another front of shirt, Steak, we signed them in 2021 australia was still in um well they're based based where you are based in melbourne and you melbourne was a no-go area for us so we couldn't go over there and do a deal and that was probably one of the most difficult deals i did in my own head because i couldn't sit with them look into their eyes and then have a beer with them afterwards or uh, go for a social afterwards it was all on zoom and it was all ridiculously early in the morning for us and late in the evening for them. And it, it, that was probably, in a way, it was an easy deal because it all come together nicely. But that was the hardest one for me to get my head around because I didn't feel like I had that connection with them. Now, luckily, over the years, we built that connection with them. But, yeah, doing it over Zoom, I wouldn't ever recommend doing a big deal like that without meeting people. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll catch you all next week. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.